In our language of chemistry, the element symbols of the periodic table form the alphabet that we use. There are ABCs. And so just as when you were in grade school learning how to build your vocabulary, learn words that you could then string together into sentences, in order to build those words, you needed to have a mastery of uh, those basic ABCs. And likewise for us, we need to have a mastery of the elements of the periodic table and the element symbols of the periodic table. So over the course of the next several weeks, you will be uh, undertaking a process where you'll be learning some of the elements, not all of the element symbols necessarily off the periodic table, um, but a lot of the more common ones, the ones that we will encounter more frequently, and we'll break it up over several weeks. And so each week, we'll take a certain subset of the periodic table and you'll learn the names and the symbols for each of those and also a little bit about the elements themselves uh, and some of their properties which we'll look at also at other times during the year as well. So in general uh, the format of the quizzes will be such that um, you should be prepared to give me either the name or the symbol. Uh, there will be both portions. The majority of it will be I give you the name, you give me the symbol. Uh, one thing that's important to remember with element symbols is that the first letter is always capitalized. So yes, capitalization counts. Um, and you also want to make sure uh, that you watch your letter formation. For instance, a lowercase a written big is not a capital A. A lowercase n written big is not a capital N. So please make sure that you are paying attention to your letter formation. Likewise, uh, I could give you the symbol and you would need to give me the name, and yes, spelling does count. So make sure that you are practicing these um, so that you're proficient with that. So the first group that we're going to look at, if you look at a periodic table, we're going to work our way from the left side to the right side, from the west coast to the east coast, so to speak. And so the first two columns you can see highlighted here are known as the group one metals or the alkali metals, and the second column is known as the group two elements or the alkaline earth metals. And so as we go week to week and we're looking at these different groupings, you'll see where is this subset in the periodic table overall. And then you'll see a blown up expanded view of it. And then you'll see off to the side also, uh, or somewhere on the, on the screen or on your notes page, a listing of the specific elements out of that group uh, that you are expected to know that you're responsible for. Now, in the case of these two groups this week, it's all of them because there's only six elements in each group for a grand total of 12. You'll notice in the upper right corner of your notes page, there is a blank space there for you to jot down when your weekly quiz is going to be. So you want to make sure you're paying attention for that date. Um, write it in, put it on your calendar so that you are studying throughout the week. So just to briefly go down through these what you'll find with the element symbols uh, and their names is that there's usually a pretty easy correlation between what letters are used in the symbol and what letters are used in the name, though not always. And we see a couple examples of these uh, even in the group one elements. So if we start with group one, uh, up at the top we have lithium, Li, easy enough to see where the Li comes from. But the very next one, sodium, has the symbol Na. And so when you look at that symbol and you look at the name, there's no natural connection between why you would use Na for the name sodium. The reason that it has that symbol is because that symbol is based off of the Latin name for sodium, which is natrium. And when you consider the Latin name for the element, it's very easy to see where those symbols come from. Likewise for potassium with its element symbol K, no obvious link to potassium, but when you consider the Latin name for potassium, which is kalium, K-A-L-I-U-M, then it's easy to see where the K comes from. Below potassium, we have rubidium, R-B, followed by cesium, C-S, and francium, like the country, F-R. Now, the alkali metals, as a family, have a pretty unique set of properties so let's take a quick look at this uh, clip demonstrating the properties comparatively of lithium, sodium, and potassium. The elements of group one on the periodic table, the alkali metals, 
share similar characteristics. They are all very soft metals. They are not found alone in nature because they are very reactive metals, particularly with water. Lithium in water. Notice similar to the video. Okay, immediately you see the reaction. You get the bubbling, skittering across the surface. That gas that's being generated is hydrogen gas. So some pretty unique properties with the alkali metals. Again, we don't typically think of metals as being so soft we could cut them with a butter knife. Um, and when you have a pure sample of this coming in contact with water, um, at the very least, it will probably melt. Um, and at, at most, it might actually ignite because of the hydrogen gas that's liberated. So pretty unique uh, grouping of elements there. If we go one column over to group two, we have the alkaline earth metals. And um, maybe an easy way to remember alkali versus alkaline earth. Alkali has only one word in the name, so that's group one. Alkaline earth has two words in the name, so that's group two. But up at the top, we start with beryllium, B-E. Okay, watch the double L in the spelling on, the, on beryllium. Then you have magnesium, M-G. Um, that one's easily confused with an element we'll see in the next grouping, the transition metals, but... Magnesium, Mg, calcium, Ca, strontium, Sr, barium, Ba, and radium, Ra. And radium is one that gets confused with another element on the other side of the periodic table. Um, so, you know, when we get to that point, just make sure you pay attention to that. No big surprises in terms of symbols uh, compared to the names. And likewise, the group two elements uh, have some pretty unique properties, not quite so extreme as the group ones. So again, to summarize, with the alkali metals group one, of all the metals of the periodic table, they are the most reactive, uh, and as such, you're never going to find them so by themselves in nature. You're not going to find a pure vein of sodium or potassium uh, or, or lithium, anything like that. They'll always be combined with another element, so they have to be chemically extracted. They are extremely soft, you can cut them with a knife, and they will react violently with water. Uh, the hydrogen gas that's produced along with the heat can cause that hydrogen gas to ignite, so you always have to be very careful uh, in your handling of pure alkali metal samples. When alkali metal elements react with other elements, they do so by giving up one, what we call, valence electron. In their outermost energy level, they have one lone electron, so they are very eager to put an emotion to it, they're very eager to give up uh, that lone electron. So that is why they are so reactive. And when they do, the remaining particle is what we call a cation, has a positive charge to it. And in this case, because it gives up one electron, it's a positive one charge. The alkaline earth metals, you see an example of one of them, calcium, it's kind of a, a dull gray color in its pure elemental state. Compared to the alkali metals, they're going to be a bit harder and a bit denser, so they will tend to sink more in water, and they will react with water. Um, they are still very reactive, so again, these you're not going to find by themselves in nature. When they react with water, they, they produce the same thing, hydrogen gas, just like the alkali metals, but not nearly as quickly, and so there's not as much um, of that risk of the hydrogen gas being ignited just because of the, the kinetics of the reaction, how quickly the hydrogen is being liberated. Another thing that separates the alkaline earth metals from the alkaline metals is they have two valence electrons, so that means that when they react, they're going to give up two electrons. Hence, they also form cations, because they've given up electrons, and those ions result in a plus two charge. And so, in this grouping, we looked at the alkali metals, 
we looked at the alkaline earth metals, we compared their properties to one another. But the main thing that you need to focus on for these weekly quizzes is those element symbols uh, and their names. Make sure that you can go both directions. I give you the name, you give me the symbol with proper capitalization. I give you the symbol, you give me the name with proper spelling. Thanks for watching.